Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Unit Lost. I'm Kirioth and we are going to talk about Steam family sharing. Good lord. On September the 11th, 2013, Steam announced Family Sharing, which is a new service which allows family and close friends to share their Steam libraries. Yes, you heard me correctly. You can share your Steam libraries. Good lord. Basically, this allows people to share their Steam libraries with people they trust. Of course, it's not as simple as that and there are certain restrictions. So let's go through it in detail with this here handy list what I have drawn up for your listening pleasure. One, you can only share your library up to 10 times. So there is no unlimited option. You can't just hand it out to everyone you know unless you only know 10 people, in which case congratulations and also you should probably get out more, I guess. Two, no need to share specific games. The entire library is shared. You don't have to give permission for particular games to be shared. The whole thing is just there, available to the person you are lending the library to. Three, not all games can be shared. Certain games that require third-party password and logins, like War Thunder or pretty much any other MMO on Steam, uh, they can't be shared. That's largely down to terms and conditions from those games themselves, which state that you cannot share your username and password and cannot share the account. Four, you cannot share a library, then play with your friend on the same game. So, for example, you can't share Borderlands 2 and then both play your copy of Borderlands 2. You can't share Left 4 Dead 2 and both play your copy of Left 4 Dead 2 or Payday 2 or any of the other 2s. That would be mad. You can't do that. 5. As the lender, you may always access and play your games at any time. If you decide to start playing when a friend is already playing one of your games, he or she will be given a few minutes to either purchase the game or quit playing. You might want to give them a bit of warning before you kick them off the game, but then again, if they really want to carry on playing, they could just buy it themselves. So, you know, you might like to bring a nasty surprise on someone. Then again, you might like to actually say to the person that you are about to start playing the game. It's up to you. Six, sometimes the games I've borrowed are unavailable for me to play. Why? Borrowed games are only available on devices that have been authorised by the lender. Borrowed games will be unavailable on even an authorised device when the lender's library is currently in use on another computer. So the library can only be used by one person at a time and the owner of the library takes precedence over everyone else. There's no none of this everyone playing stuff at the same time. It's not how it works. No. 7. Region restricted content cannot be shared across regions. So uh, if any of you Australian chaps were getting excited about being allowed to legally play an 18 plus game, uh, I'm afraid not. Still can't do that, you're just going to have to sort that mess out. You need to get with the times. 8. Will I be punished for any cheating or fraud conducted by other users while playing my games? Your family sharing privileges may be revoked if your library is used by borrowers to conduct cheating or fraud. We recommend you only authorise familiar computers you know to be secure. Really, that is a statement that probably shouldn't have to be made, because if you just give your Steam library to any old mental, then what are you playing at? Only give it to people you trust, only give it to people who you know. Because, obviously, if someone takes your copy of CSGO and cheats like a mofo, you will be in severe trouble for that. Don't do it. Only give it to people you trust. It's the family sharing service, not the I just met a mental on Steam friends service. So it's not a totally free system in which you can share games with 10 people and they can all play games at the same time and you can play together. It is actually heavily restricted, but let's be honest here, if we expected anything else, we would probably need our heads looking at. The ability to share a library with another user and then allow them to play a game until you want to use your Steam library is pretty awesome, even despite the restrictions. From our point of view as well, this is like ridiculously good. It will cut down on the number of games that we buy because, as you've noticed, there's two of us. Me and Stai, we quite often want to play the same games, and we, of course, end up buying two copies of the game so that we can both play it, even when it's single-player only. Now, with this system, one of us can buy the game, complete the game, and then hand it over, figuratively, of course, using the Steam sharing system, to the other one. I might actually be able to play The Walking Dead at last. I've missed it on every Steam sale it's been in, somehow. I'd really like to play that. Star's got it on his Steam account, so he can share the account with me. I can play The Walking Dead. I'll be happy. He'll get a nice warm glow from doing something nice. It'll be quite good. I think we do need to just quickly go over one thing, though. Because this is something that's going to cause confusion in the future, and it's kind of causing confusion now, and it can be cleared up quite easily. If you lend your library to a friend, they can select, download, and play any game they want to. 
However, as soon as you start playing any games in your library, the library will become unavailable as the owner is now using it. We've already said it before, but say it again, you cannot play a game at the same time as the person who owns the account. So if I lend you my account, which I won't, don't get excited, and you start playing XCOM, and then I decide later on I would like to play Dragon Age Origins because I haven't played that game enough, I can start playing Dragon Age. It will kick you off XCOM. Now, you could say, well, why is that? That's not fair. It's a sharing system. It's not a free games for all system. If you're able to play any game you wanted off the account whilst the owner was still using it, you could theoretically have 10 people who no longer buy games because they can just play whatever they want whenever they want because their mate owns that game now you can argue that people already do that with consoles and that's the traditional way of sharing you give the disc to someone they play it they give you the disc back but digital distribution is not the same as physical media and different restrictions are always going to re- going to apply at the end of the day it's still a sharing service and it's still very much in the vein of traditional sharing where you give you mate the disc he plays the game and then gives it you back admittedly a library is a lot of games instead of just one but the principle is pretty much the same and to do it any other way i suspect would probably cut down on the amount of profit that Valve and Steam would make and the developers and publishers of these games would make. And obviously, they want to get people to share, but they don't want to end up losing a ton of money. That's not how business works. I mean, we can complain about it and rage about it all you like, but all in all, for what you're getting, I think it's a pretty fair system. It's not something that Steam had to do. It's something that they've been asked to do, and they have done it. And yeah, there are downsides. But if you want the game that bad, if you want to play it all the time, buy the game. You know, it's it, it's a sharing system. It's not a transfer of ownership system, and I think it's perfect. I think it's perfectly reasonable. I haven't got a problem with it. Um, hopefully, other digital distribution platforms like Origin and maybe UPlay, uh, any of them, in fact, will follow suit and actually do what Steam is doing. Um, that would be good because Steam does not have access to every game. Obviously, if they did, it would be a massive monopoly and terribly unfair on everybody. Um, which of course means there are other games on other services. If we could have the same kind of system on every service, that would be good. That would be ridiculously good. All in all, I think this is a really good thing. I I think there are downsides, but I don't think the downsides are enough to say that it's uh, like a waste of time or that Valve is messed up. Not being able to have a bunch of people playing on one library all at the same time seems perfectly reasonable for me. And yeah, all in all, pretty good. Pretty good off Valve, good showing question is what do you think do you think it's fair do you think you should be able to play different games on the same library between different people do you think people will actually take advantage of this what are your thoughts on the restrictions leave your comments below let us know what you think we always read the comments always because we're mental like that and yeah we will see what you have to say my name's kirioth you can follow me on twitter with at kirioth funnily enough Subscribe to the channel, like the video, do all that funky stuff, and uh, get sharing. And I'll see you next time. Toodaloo.